Hi everyone, welcome to another tutorial in our mini-series on building websites with the Blockdown package in R. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to override the existing CSS on your website. CSS is a language that works together with HTML to stylize your web pages. So I want to start off by walking you through what CSS is, what its definition is, where to find it on your website, and obviously, finally, once we have this understanding, how to actually use that to make aesthetic changes on your website. So let's start off with some definitions. HTML and CSS, but also Markdown, will all work together to create our web pages. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Its main aim is to structure content on our web page. And this content is stored in different tags. For example, you would have tags that would indicate to HTML this is an image or a text or a link. Now, HTML stores this information in a very basic style, so basically black and white. But if you wanted to change that, we will have to use CSS. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and it works together with HTML to stylize this content in those tags. So for example, if I had a text tag and I wanted to change the font size or the color or its position, I'll need to use CSS for that. And I'll give you an example later on of how exactly this works. Now, until now, once we worked in our um, for our web pages, we usually worked on markdown files. Markdown is a text to HTML conversion tool. Its main aim is to allow us to write using a very easy to read and easy to write plain text format that doesn't have those tags um, and doesn't show the CSS that is used uh, to stylize this uh, content. And obviously once we're done, it converts back to HTML so it will be able to be rendered into a web page. Now to understand the uh, relationship between, between HTML and CSS, I think it's easy to think about them as HTML as an architecture. So it basically puts in the most important content in a very basic manner. While CSS comes as an interior designer and its main role is to kind of like move things around in space and add aesthetics to the basic content. So now let's take a look at how those look like in a coding format. This is an HTML element. It consists of a content and tags. You have the opening tag and the closing tag. Here you can see that in the opening tag you have the letter P and this indicates the, what is the content within this element. P stands for paragraph, so HTML would know within this tags the content itself is going to be displayed as text. So my cat is grumpy is going to be displayed on our screen. So if we were to render this information right now, we would be able to see a very plain text, you know, black and white on our web page. But let's say that we wanted to give it a little bit more style. So let's say we wanted to color the font in red and give this little text a background in black. All we have to do is to use CSS. As you can see here, it's uh, written in purple style equals. And this is added directly to the HTML element, as you can see, into the tag. So right now, if we were to render this um, tag into um, a web page, it would look like that. You would see the exact same information, but now it has a different style. All right, so another important player in this HTML tags family is the div tag. Um, the div tag is an important element it, because it defines the division or the section in the HTML document. And it's used as a little container that would contain, would hold those HTML elements that we saw just the slide before. And this could obviously um, be styled with CSS. And it looks something like that. You would have a div, which is basically a division within this HTML document. And in that div, um, you would have the HTML element. Now, if you were to look on web pages in a inspect element mode, and I will show you how to do that um, shortly, you will be able to see which container has which elements. So if we were to be in an inspect element mode, you would see something like a transparent rectangle, which would indicate where the container is on your page and what HTML element live in it. Okay. So now HTML and Markdown in R look very similar, and we already did that um, in our uh, folders for our website. 
So for example, in our internal project folder, we created an index file that had a, an extension .rmd, um, and this stands for R Markdown. So remember how I told you this is kind of like plain text and we don't see the tags in this file? That's exactly what we did. We simply wrote text into that file. Now in the background, um, an index.html um, file was created. As, as I said, it converts back to HTML, and this is exactly what it does. As you can see here, it took this text and it um, converted it into an HTML element that has the um, opening and closing tags of P. Now, it's, as you can see here, it's much easier for us, for example, to write just plain text and not worry about those tags at all. So this is very handy. All right, so if we were to see that on our website's view, this is just plain text. So obviously in the markdown files where we write down text, it's kind of like a visual um, simulation of how it would look like on our website. So sometimes we would not want to really get into the HTML tags and make changes there, but obviously often it's very easy to use the um, uh, markdown files. All right, so let's jump into our studio to see where we can find those elements and make changes in the CSS. Right, so here I am in my R studio in the R project of my website, and I'm going to call in the blog down library and then use the serve site function to view it in the viewer pane. So the first thing that I want to show you is where the CSS overriding file sits within your folders. So basically the current CSS or the styling of your website is given as a default by WowJimmy. And if you want to make any changes to the styling, you'll need to overwrite the existing default settings. And you'll do that in a specific file. So let me help you find that file first. Go to your files and then scroll down and find the themes and click to github.com and then click twice through, and then you will find Wow to me here, and then click on Assets, and SCSS is the folder where this um, overriding file um, sits, and this is the custom.scss file. When you click on it, you'll see um, at the top, this is exactly what we're looking for, override this file to add your own SCSS styling. Okay, so the second thing that I wanted to show you are the containers, so the divs and the HTML elements that exist on your web page currently that you can actually inspect and make changes live and see whether you like them and then redefine them on this uh, the current uh, files that we have open. So to do that, just go to the viewer pane and let's open our website in the browser. Here, right click and then scroll to inspect element and this puts us in an inspect element mode which is very useful because it enables us to view and edit the um, those HTML elements that we were talking about and the CSS that go along with them so on the left side you can see the different um, divs that I was um, talking about um, a little earlier and in each one of them, you can see the nested elements that, that live within those divs. Um, so for each one of those divs or elements that you're working on, when you click on them on the right side, you'll have the style attributes that define the specific div that you're working on. And also here in the box model, you'll see the specific dimensions for um, this uh, specific div or element. Okay, so let's start by an example. Um, let's change the width of the container that holds the text of our website. So basically all this. So to do that, just go and try to look for the right container. I already know which one it is. So it um, is called um, class container. Um, and here, let's say that I want to make it a little bit wider. So in the style attributes, you'll be able to see the definition of that container and it says max width. 1290. And let's say that I want to change um, these pixels. So instead of 1290, I'm going to say 1500. Okay, and if we're happy with these changes, all we need to do is simply just copy the new definition of that container 
and then navigate back to our R Studio and go to that specific file, that overriding file, and then paste that new definition of that new container and save. And when we go back to our browser, we'll be able to see the changes that we have made. Okay, let's walk through another example. Let's say that we want to change the avatar, like that image right here. So all we have to do is again, right click and inspect element. And that is very useful because it really navigates the, um, the user to the exact um, location of that uh, element. And so within that div ID profile sits, the, um, it sits an element that has the tag IMG that stands for an image. The definition of this avatar right here in the style attribute um, window. And let's say that I'm not really happy with the width and height and I want it to be a little bit larger than what it is currently is. And to do that again, I'm just going to change here the um, definition, uh, how many pixels I want for this avatar. So let's say it's going to be 400 by 400. All right, cool. So let's um, transfer the new definition of this avatar to our um, overriding um, file. So again, back to our studio just below and paste that new definition and save it. Okay. So one last thing that I want to show you, one last example that is very useful is let's say that I want to change the color of this header right here. Please note that our page is basically can be understood as one long web page. So whenever we make changes to elements that have an identical definition over and over again, so for example, this header right here, um, that definition of this header also um, is exactly the same definition of this header. So if we were to make a change to this element, obviously it's going to override all the definitions of the same element throughout our page. So let's say that um, I want to change the color of the headers on my web page. So again, just right click, go to inspect element, go to where this container is located. And here you can see that within a uh, div class call 12 um, sits an element that has um, a tag um, H1, which stands for header one, which is the largest font size. Um, and here you can see that um, if I want to make changes in the color, I will navigate again to the style attributes. And here with this, with, within this container here, H1, I don't really have any definition of color, so I'll have to add that. So here all I do is that I just press enter to create a new line and I'm going to use color and it already puts the right syntax in, so that's very useful. And let's say I'm going to try to match that color to the color of the academic, um, the, the title academic there at the top left of my website. So I'm going to write pink, but then obviously this gives me a pink that I'm not really happy with. So all I have to do to find the right um, color is to click on this little square here and it gives me all the options um, across all RGBs. So if I was to just, draw, let's try to find the right pink. Just navigate through, oh, I think it looks fine right here. All right, cool. And that gives me the dimensions of the RGB and so I can just click enter. And then obviously, once again, we will just copy that information and then go back to our studio, just create a new line and paste that definition here. Okay, great. So now, as you can see, we, uh, let's close actually that element, that inspect element mode. So as you can see, the text is a little bit wider than it used to be. The avatar is a little bit larger. And then we have that element here in a different font color. And then if you scroll down, you'll see that these, um, this definition obviously affected all the other headers in our website. Okay, so that looks really great. Um, let's navigate back to our studio. And now obviously what we need to do is that we need to stage um, 
the changes that we've made um, and commit. And then let's say CSS, oops, CSS changes um, and then commit. All right, and then push. Okay, great. So hopefully you could benefit from this tutorial and I really look forward to see you again in the next tutorial.